Hey guys, so I hope you guys are having a great day. I want to jump right into this week's topic. So last week I talked about what our co-parenting schedule looked like while living in the same city and I promised I would dedicate the rest of the month on Thursdays to co-parenting for the month of May. So this week I want to talk about how the heck I was able to move to Texas in the first place. So I want to preface by saying both my ex-husband and I are from the same small town, um, grew up there, born and raised, and all of our family still lives either in the Houston area or you know back where we're from, Angleton, um, Brazoria County. And when we moved to San Diego, we always told ourselves we would move back to Texas, whether that be Houston or Austin. Um, if you're from Texas, you just, there's some part of you that is always wants to go back. I don't know what it is, but that's just what we thought. Then once we had children and we had three boys, we said, now we for sure got to move back to Texas when you retire because, I mean, let's face it, I think sports are better here. I don't know. But we love sports and Texas is big in sports. So we said we would come back to Texas. So that's kind of how it, like the idea floated around in the first place. So once we decided that we were going to go our separate ways, um, this topic became a, like we were at a standstill essentially. I wanted to move right then um, to Texas and my ex-husband gave the argument that he was there in San Diego and he wanted to be around his kids, rightfully so. And so we essentially had to come up with a compromise that worked for both of us. And so the compromise looked like this. As long as he was employed by the Chargers, I had to stay in San Diego. And when he was no longer employed by the Chargers, I would then be able to move. Now at the time, he still had like a year and a half, I think, on his contract. And so I stayed in San Diego a year and a half prior to ever moving to Texas when we weren't together. And that's how we did that co-parenting schedule um, the week on, week off. What I will say is, because I get this a lot, do you ever regret um, moving to Texas? And um, how's life been like since you moved to Texas? I have both pluses and minuses. The What's hard is knowing I essentially moved my kids away from their father. I have boys and women, men, boys need their father, period. Um, that That's hard and it's still hard to this day because I see how much they miss their dad and their uh, stepmom and their brother and sister there. And that's hard um, and they don't get to see them that often. So um, it definitely tugs at my heart. Now the plus, I feel like we've, you know, created a beautiful life here in Texas and they're closer to their, like both of our families, um, way closer than they would be if we were to have stayed in San Diego. And specifically for me, my relationship with my mother-in-law, um, I don't call her my ex-mother-in-law because she's just more present in my life now than actually when we were married. I'll be honest, we didn't get along um, when I was married. And now being here, her and I have built a relationship that we would have never built had I lived in San Diego. Like I said, she is more present in my life and in the boy's life. She comes to everything. Um, she's there when I need her. I mean, they see her so often. It brings such joy to my life to have that relationship with um, their grandmother. And then when my mom comes down, being able to see my mom more often. So those are like the pluses um, for me. But again, it still tugs at my heart to see how much my kids miss their father and their stepmom and their brother and sister. That's why I say it's so, 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 so very important for couples to have these conversations when you decide that you no longer wanna be with that individual. We as adults make decisions and a lot of times we don't even look at how it's going to affect the kids until later, especially if you have younger children. Um, 
I now know like in situations to allow my kids to have a voice. Not that I need permission per se, um, but in talking with my therapist, like kids want to have a voice because we make decisions as adults, but they affect, our decisions affect the kids or your child. Um, and we don't look at it that way. We are making decisions based on our feelings and our needs and wants. And we got to stop the cycle of doing that and have conversations with our children. My kids were younger when it happened. Um, so we didn't even tell our kids, we were my oldest son, we were getting a divorce, but I'll get into that much later in another video. But having that space for kids to be able to go to their mother and father and allow them to tell you how they feel about certain situations and, and or moving if they're old enough to have a voice, we take that from them. And it's so important that we acknowledge their feelings and then make decisions based on that. I can't stress enough like how important that is. Divorce rate is high. I know there's divorces happening every day, but I see it so much um, from couples and individuals that separate or decide that they want to get a divorce. And this topic comes up like where, who's going to move where, and if at all possible, if a father is present in a child's life, you know, you gotta have those conversations about what you think is best for the children. I know every state has their own set of laws on what you can and can't do and make sure that both parties are exercising their rights, specifically more so for the father because they're the ones that don't have the kids generally. We usually have the kids. So check your laws, you know, consult an attorney, but at all costs, my main point for talking about this is to tell couples and individuals how important it is to have these conversations about if or when something happens, or maybe you're going through it now, um, what, we're, what we're gonna do with the kids when, you know, if something should arise. So I hope that helps somebody. Um, I know there are a lot of you that are going through divorces and trying to figure out you know, your next steps. So if I can be a resource and give you some more information, I'd be happy to. Um, I don't want you guys to make the same mistakes that we did and I'll be the first to say we are not perfect. We still struggle from time to time, but it's in these struggles that we learn and if I can pass along what we have learned so you don't have to go through it, I am more than happy to because I see how it affects our kids. So stay tuned for next week's video. I'm going to talk about what our parenting schedule looks like now that we are in two separate states. So have a good day and I will see you next week.